Hey everybody, welcome back to the Dungeon Dive. Daniel here. I hope you're doing well, and if you're not, I hope you are soon. Okay, welcome back to the Deep Dive series into the realms of Four Against Darkness. I know it has been a while since we have looked at uh, Four Against Darkness, and I have been wanting to get back to the game for some time now, uh, both to play the game and also to share uh, my opinion on a lot of the expansions. Four Against Darkness is, of course, an ever-expanding game. I think this is going, this is part 10 of this series. And I could see this series going on for many, many, many more episodes. Since the last time I recorded a video on Four Against Darkness, I think there have been something like, I don't know, 10 supplements or something released for the game. And I still have a lot of stuff that um, I want to get onto the channel. I've been really wanting to play the game again, so I have perfect timing. Uh, the, the, the want, the desire, and everything just kind of came together for us to do some new content on For Against Darkness. So I recently started a new adventure or a new party of adventurers, and I decided to use only the, um, only the heroes, the classes from the base game, so I could keep that part simple while adding elements from other expansions. And so right now, my party consists of, I've gone through uh, one dungeon, and my party consists now of a level two cleric named Baka, a level one rogue named Mesmer, a level two barbarian named Scrack, and a level one elf named Kara. So those are my four characters, and this is the map of the adventure that I just finished. And that adventure was actually from one of the card packs, and that is actually what we are going to be looking at today on this video. Oh, and here, are all, here also are the pawns that I am using for uh, my adventurers here. And we have Mesmer, uh, that is the rogue. There is our barbarian, Skrok. There is our cleric, uh, Baka, and our elf, Kara. And these are from the um, Pathfinder Pawns. And I'm going to be featuring these a lot more on the channel. Pretty soon, I should be doing some videos on five leagues from the Borderlands. And I'm going to be using all standees for that rather than miniatures. And I really do like these Pathfinder pawns. There are some great looking uh, little uh, cardboard minis in those sets. But today we're going to be taking a look at the card supplements, or at least some of the card supplements for Four Against Darkness. And these are all available to purchase on Drive Through Cards. And I did purchase all of these for the channel. I've had them for some time and I've been wanting to do a video for on them for some time. So we have kind of two different sets of cards. We have these cards here, which are adventures, dungeons, and then we have these cards here, which are enemies. So let's look at some of the dungeon cards first. So as you know, with a normal game of Four Against Darkness, you are going to, going to be taking an adventuring party into a dungeon and normally what you do is you are going to be rolling D6 and you're going to be looking up results on a number of different charts. And those charts are going to dictate uh, the rooms that you find, the corridors. They will dictate the different things that you can find when you search those rooms. They will tell you what monsters you're going to fight, what bosses you're going to fight, the treasure you are going to get, and so on and so on. But what these cards do is these cards, they take the place of all of those um, lookup charts, all of those tables. And so really, you can use just these cards to play most of the game. You're still going to need some dice. You're still going, going to need your, your paper character sheets and all of that. But you won't need books to look up things on tables most of the time. 
sometimes one of these cards might tell you to roll on an appropriate uh, scroll table or maybe use one of the tables from another book in order to generate some treasure or something. But for the most part, your games are going to be contained within the confines of these single decks. So what do you get when you buy one of these decks? You get a card here that is going to tell you how you are going to play the game. And so this says, uh, you play just like regular four against darkness. Instead of rolling on tables, draw cards using the context in the appropriate text boxes. For example, draw a card to determine the shape of the first room, then draw another card for its content. Then draw a card and read the box appropriate to its content. If there is a combat encounter, resolve the combat um, box. In all cases, to determine anything, trap, treasures, etc., draw a card. Start generating content from the first room. And then on the back of the instruction card, you are also going to get some special rules, which is going to give you a little synopsis, a little bit of a backstory, a little thematic uh, flavor text. And then also a few additional rules that when combined all of these things with the things on the cards is going to make each of these dungeons feel a little more unique, a little more customized for this particular adventure. And I really do like that it, I think these sets strengthen the thematic core of the game. And so this is called the Forest of the Spider Queen. And this was by Alexi Aperin and Andrea Sfiligoy. And um, this, um, Alex Aperin is the designer of the Pocket Lands supplements that you can also use, which also has an overland kind of adventure supplement that you can use with Ford Against Darkness. And we are going to be taking a look at Pocket Lands and another overland kind of a hex crawl style supplement another solution for when you want to connect your dungeons when you want to travel from one dungeon to another uh, right now there are two really good solutions for that uh, but this says so this is for levels one to four and this says that uh, pave the way through the woods clear a path to all four sides of the sheet up uh, uh, clear a path to all four sides of the sheet to get 100 gold pieces payment from locals. Rooms are clearings and corridors are paths. Foresters, wood elves, rangers, druids, conservationists, and wilderness guides all count as foresters. And then you get some special rules here on what to do with trees, waters, and spiders. So the main part of your decks are going to be uh, consisting of 12 cards. And those cards are going to have all of the information you need, all of the information from the various charts that you might roll up on your various supplements for Four Against Darkness. So we have our corridors, we have our rooms, we have what we find when we search things, what you find when there's a special um, encounter or a trap or a combat or a treasure. And every time you need to determine one of those things, you take your deck of cards, you shuffle it, and you draw. So this would tell us that we found uh, this room here because all rooms are yellow and all corridors are white. So this would be a room, and this room is empty, but it may be searched, okay? So we would draw that shape on our map, and then we would search by, again, rolling the dice or uh, mixing up the cards. And for searching, we found one clue or one treasure. So in this case, we can mark our clue on our character sheet, or if we wanted to find a treasure, we would again mix these up and draw for our treasure. And our treasure here would be 2d6 plus 2 gold. If we found a room with combat, we would mix up the cards and look for a combat. And here we would be fighting spider bears. Uh, maybe we found some uh, a misty ravine or maybe a bear trap. And so each one of these things, because it's developed specifically for this deck of cards, does help strengthen the, th the theme of this dungeon by each one of these being like a custom uh, encounter for this particular dungeon. And that is something that I enjoy quite a bit. Most of the decks of cards also come with a few other special cards. You are going to get 
two bosses that have art and they have the stats for the bosses. And as you can see, these bosses utilize the highest character level. So these can scale to any uh, level of adventurer that you have in your party. And each of the bosses will also have some special rules. So all of these things combined make these bosses feel a little bit more unique than just rolling up on a random table. I really do like that as well. Additionally, most of the card uh, expansions also come with a couple new magical and special weapons and items that you can find while you are on your quest. Uh, this one here comes with the forest gnome crossbow and the fey rope. So really cool. I enjoy these quite a bit. So we have the forest of the spider queen. We have the stump of elemental evil. And this one is a little more basic in that it doesn't come with special boss or item cards, but these cards here do include a new magic treasure table for you to shuffle and select. But what's cool about this one is that I think the special rules for this one are pretty cool. So we have a mission, uh, delve into the cave under an enormous rotting stump and slay the tentacle worm that has been kidnapping villagers. The party will be paid 100 gold if they rid the monster. Okay, so we have our tentacle worm boss here. But this special rule here is slow ceilings. All characters have minus one to attack rolls. Short characters like dwarves, halflings, goblins, gnomes, and lutons, and characters with light weapons ignore this penalty. Narrow corridors. Heroes can only move through them one at a time. So larger characters with big two-handed weapons are at a disadvantage in this particular dungeon. And that is kind of cool. I like that special rule there. It's a really good example of a very easy little uh, modification to make something feel very different. Additionally, as most of us know, when you are playing Four Against Darkness, you have your marching order. And in a corridor, only the first two characters in your uh, party can attack, unless they are ambushed. In that case, only the back two characters can attack. Well, in this, since the corridors are tight, you are going in a single file line. So that does change up the gameplay quite a bit and probably changes up the way you want to think about your party order. Pretty cool there. Uh, the one that I just recently played was the um, Curse of Castle Ravenstein, not Ravenloft, uh, completely different than Ravenloft. <laughs> and this is kind of a, a horror themed um, expansion here. So you have this one was a, a lover's quarrel between brothers. Gregor and Ivor Vorigon tragically ended in the death of Elizabeth. She cursed the Vorgans and became and who became fiends, and the region plunged into darkness. Villagers will pay 200 gold to lift the curse, collect three of Elizabeth's bones, and return them to her crypt. And to find the crypt, we have to find uh, one of the bosses in order to, to kill the boss and get the crypt key. And so this game here came with two weapons, which are a weapon and an item, which I did find. So we have this... Uh, Big magic masterwork sword, the black flame of Massimos, and the dark star. This is Elizabeth's amulet. And so these are two items that I was able to give to my party. I ended up giving the big two handed sword to my cleric because I wanted the barbarian to use it, but the bar bar uh, barbarians in this game cannot use anything magical. So this goes to my cleric, and then this um, amulet here is going to go to Kara. And then there are two bosses that this uh, particular expansion comes with. And those are our two brothers, the brothers of Vorigon. We have Ivor, who is a shape-shifting lycanthrope there, werewolf. And we have uh, this uh, Greg Gregor, who is an undead kind of a lich-style boss. And each one of those has their stats and their special um, abilities there. And then here are the cards. So as you go into the rooms, as you search them, Certain rooms will have these little bone shapes, and those are the bones that you have to find. Once you find those bones, and once you kill one of the bosses, you will get your crypt key. Then the next room, the next yellow uh, 
room you uh, explore, that's the crypt, and then you can win the game there by getting rid of the curse by returning Elizabeth's bones to her crypt. And then we have here, we have the Roads of Peril. Now, the Roads of Peril is another outdoor adventure, so you're going to be in the wilderness. So any of your wilderness expansions that might have some little wilderness tweaks and rules and ways to augment wilderness adventures, you could uh, use those, uh, those special rules here. But again, you're going to have your corridors, your paths, or your roads, and then your yellows are going to be your clearings. And you can have some settlement events, uh, come across different settlements and special events there. Here is the rules for this one. Uh, this is a mission. You find yourselves in a town with no available work. There's a merchant wagon leaving town today. Escort the merchant and visit five settlements to get 150 gold from the head driver. You also have an optional um, mission and different ways to use roads and pathfinding. So in this game, in this uh, adventure, in this quest, you are trying to find a certain number of settlements to help that uh, merchant earn his or her keep. And then you also have two bosses here. You have the Hobgoblin Captain and the Wasteland Prophet. And two special items. We have the Knight Champion's Pavilion and the Magic Spyglass. That was the Roads to Peril. And then we also have Silent Mill. Now Silent Mill, of course, being a play on Silent Hill, you do have this character who looks um suspiciously like a pyramid head there so we have a gore hook and we have a squirrel mella a grotesque siren and then the two special items you can get in the adventure for silent mill you can get the dinner bell and you can get the gronsky the opener of ways a giant two-handed warhammer i cannot wait to come across that and um, maybe that is the Warhammer plus two plus one magic. Yeah, again, uh, the Barbarian can't use that. That's a real bummer. I need, I need to find a good Masterwork weapon for my Barbarian. But these, uh, these two bosses here seem pretty complex, which is nice. They have a lot of different things that they can do. And here we have our Silent Mill. We have our special rules. We have our mission there. And uh, the, uh, a little thing about the bosses and some dusty cellars. Flower in the air. Reroll any four result on attack rolls while underground. Interesting. There are different ways to go underground in this adventure there. But yeah, I really like these car packs a lot. I am hoping that they develop more. I think there might be one that I am missing. But I really would like to see more of these uh, kind of card adventure packs just because it, I, I like the way that they fit um, thematically a little bit better together. And then uh, lastly today, we will take a look at these four packs of different kinds of monsters. So this can greatly expand your games where you can have more variety in your vermin, your minions, your weird monsters, and your bosses. So with these, you get six new vermin, and each one of those is going to have their own special rules and some really cool art. So we have our fiendish ferns, our rain spiders, our brown centipedes, shadow moths, bug folk, and bone picker rats. And then we have six new minions. We have skeleton soldiers, goblin Poisoners, Hobold Spearmen, Orc of the Red Plume, Orc Pikemen, and Mist Zombies. And then we have six new weird monsters, kind of sub bosses or mini bosses. We have the Green Harpy, the Black Tailed Manticore, the Skeleton King, that is awesome, the Mist Dragon, the Wall Crawling Wraith and the Tiger Chimera. And then finally, we have six new bosses here. We have the Ogre Hunter Gatherer, the Water Fiend, the Orc Warlord, the Ogre Smasher, the Black Knight, and the Oblivion Lich. 
So with these, you can use these in any of your four against darkness games to supplement, to augment, and to modify the various vermin, minions, weird monsters, and boss tables. So these cards here can add a lot of variety, a lot of different nuances, a lot of different ways to experience the game because these monsters all have little rules that change the way that you are going to encounter them. So, all right, guys, well, I hope you enjoyed this look at the Four Against Darkness cards. Again, uh, these are available at Drive Through Cards. In just a couple days, we're going to continue our look at this game. And we're going to take a look at a couple new books that I've uh, recently purchased. And that is Twisted Final Fights and Twisted Hordes. So, all right, guys, well, I hope you enjoyed taking a look at this uh, Four Against Darkness cards. And we will talk to you later. Bye bye.